pants and shirts and jackets and hats. I swear to God, if I hear another person say this, this is making a comeback when it's not, because it is literally the godfather of streetwear. Don't call it a comeback. I've been here for years. I'm rocking my pants. Put some of the beer. What is going on, guys? My name is Felix, and welcome to the video. Today, we're going to talk about Stussy and how it hasn't fallen out of favor, how it's not going to lose its sort of status in streetwear, and this is definitely not making a comeback because it has been around for the past 30 years, going on 40. Without Stussy, we wouldn't have much of today's streetwear brands, and many of the skateboard brands as well were heavily influenced by Stussy or funded by them in some way or another. He's arguably one of the biggest influences in the whole streetwear community for the past 40 years, and it's incredible to see how far the brand has come. Stussy was founded in the early 80s by Sean Stussy. He opened the store mainly as a surfwear brand, but later moved into lifestyle and skatewear, opening a number of stores in the early 80s, moving into the 90s as well, when he opened a store in Soho in New York with the help from James Jebbia. People collect them, you know, like if, say, like, you know, like these, you know, there's 10 colours, and a lot of people buy every single colour, you know. James Jebbia, of course, went on to open Supreme, and the rest is history. He also moved into business with Frank Sinatra Jr, which has no relation to the singer, so don't worry, get rid of him, before eventually leaving the company in 1996, leaving the brand Stussy to the family of the Sinatras. Since then, it's opened a number of stores worldwide, including Amsterdam, LA, obviously New York, Tokyo. There's hundreds of them. They're known as chapter stores, which are kind of Stussy stores. And I have to say that the actual stores themselves are really, really nice. Probably one of the best like stores in every city that I've been to. We can't talk about Stussy without talking about the brand logo. That script font is legendary and is known by pretty much everyone. Unlike many other brands that have like a sort of edgy approach to everything, Stussy maintains the same sort of ethos that it did when it started many, many years ago, which is about this whole tribe community. Everyone that wears the brand is part of the Stussy tribe, and it's a worldwide community that Sean Stussy basically created himself. A tribe? I don't know, I just think it was on a much more earthy tip than a posse. You know, this wasn't a big posse of badass people. A tribe was a very organic word, it had a good old world feel to it. And, uh, it just kind of stood the test of time. He wanted to make a family and a community of people who wore his brand and that everyone feels part of this community. Rather than just wanting to make money from the clothes, he made the clothes for the people and his audience. He wanted to build from the grassroots and build a good fan base and constantly please them with every new collection. And let's be honest, it's probably one of the best entry brands into streetwear, which is affordable and accessible. We got some hats. No, wait a minute, we don't have hats. So when it comes to target audience for Stussy, they're pretty much everyone. They literally have anything for everyone. As I said, it's a very good entrance piece to streetwear, so they do have very basic streetwear pieces. They'll go for the classic logo t-shirts, but if you look past the classic logo t-shirts, hoodies and sweatshirts, you'll see there's a very strong design team behind this. They'll alter the logo in different ways, have really cool graphic tees, which are heavily inspired by graffiti, have cool embroidery on many different pieces of clothing, as well as hoodies, jackets, t-shirts, socks, trousers, short sleeve shirts, pretty much everything. And their graphics department is very, very strong. For me, my favorite pieces are definitely the short sleeve shirts, especially for summer, their graphics are incredible. And they do challenge the likes of Supreme when it comes to the graphics on the short sleeve shirts. Of course, those have caps for pretty much everyone. We're talking five panel camp caps, snapbacks, beanies, everything. They literally do every hat under the sun. The cut and sew pieces are also extremely well made. I've never found someone to do a zip up polo like Stussy and their designs are constantly great when it comes to these zip up polos. Many other of their cut and sew pieces are very unique and simple and kind of build everything in and create a great basis for a wardrobe if you're looking for it. They're not going to stupidly heavily brand it, but if they do, they're kind of smart with the logo. They'll have it in a college font, they'll have it upside down, they'll have it going down the thing. Much like Supreme with their branding, they're very, very clever with it. When it comes to collaborations, I think they consistently create great work. Collaborations with the likes of Alpha Industries, Dover Street Market, Patter, just to name a few, have all been really, really good. Most notably, I think last year they had their anniversary t-shirt release, which was in DSM, and they released a bunch of old t-shirts, re-released them to the public, and they sold out extremely quickly. These t-shirts are probably some of my favorite graphics that they've ever released, and I can't wait to get my hands on one of them. I've just got to find them somewhere. Unlike many other brands, the seat has consistently had the same aesthetic and the same sort of target audience in mind. Reproducing old pieces, which kind of brings in the nostalgia feel to their brand, and they're consistently making good products which are always accessible. 
When it comes to this so-called comeback, I think that every single Supreme season, the same statement is made by someone in the streetwear community. Stussy is making a comeback. Oh yeah, the new Stussy collection is amazing. And I just feel like it's an excuse for people to say, oh, I don't really like the new Supreme collection. Many people kind of think that Stussy isn't a hype beast brand, so they kind of avoid themselves from Supreme and focus more on Stussy. It's kind of a way to make them avoid themselves being called hype beasts. This is a huge shame because I feel that Stussy are constantly creating great pieces and great collections and their lookbooks are probably some of the best in the streetwear community. I have to say Stussy and Carhartt probably have the best lookbooks in the entire streetwear industry. For me they have a better customer service than most other brands, especially Palace and Supreme, and I feel like because of their wider audience they kind of cater for everyone as I've said earlier, and I think that people are put off by that, especially in the streetwear community. But for me when it comes to looking into streetwear stores such as Size, Urban Outfitters, and even a few skate stores, I always look and go straight to the Stussy section because I always like to see what new pieces Stussy have released or created. Their releases aren't as widely broadcasted as many other streetwear brands so it's kind of cool to have a look and to actually see the clothes in person unlike many other brands where you have to go to the stores or queue for a while which is a huge shame because you don't actually get to see them in person and it's a luck of the draw online. So to conclude, I have to say that Stussy are probably the best brand in streetwear at the moment and have been for the last 40 years, 100%. Just because it's considered mainstream doesn't mean that the brand is dead, it just means that they have more popularity. You could say that Supreme is now mainstream, but that brand is still dead. I don't really get that whole idea of a brand going mainstream and it becoming dead. To be honest, that just means that they're doing their job correctly and they're making a lot of money. Stussy has opened up its target audience to everyone, which is why I think they've been so successful over the past 40 years, because they're not only targeting surfers, in the west coast of America. They're targeting skaters in New York. They're targeting everyday people who go about their day. It's really cool to see a brand that is most known for these things going for a wider audience and catering for pretty much everyone. Anyway guys, that was my thoughts on Stussy and the so-called comeback. I'm trying to reach 200 subscribers by the end of March, so please help me do that. I'm currently on 144, I think, as I'm recording this video. It's not far off, and once I reach 200, if that's before March, I'm just gonna set an even higher target. Also, shout out to the one person that dislikes every single video on my page. You're the reason why I'm still doing this. Anyway guys, thank you for watching, and I'll see you in the next video, which should be on Sunday, hopefully. I'm not too sure. But anyway, see you then.